What does it take to do the impossible? What does it take to achieve paradigm shifting, never seen before breakthroughs consistently? So what I discovered in all these domains is that it doesn't actually matter where you look. You could be talking about the action adventure sport athletes. You can be talking about business tycoons. You can be talking about technologists or artists. It doesn't matter. Every domain you find ultimate human performance has the exact same signature. It is a state of consciousness known to researchers as flow. Now you may know flow by other names, right? You may call it runner's high or being in the zone. If you happen to play basketball, you might call it being unconscious. If you're a beatnik jazz musician, you're being in the pocket. If you do stand-up comedy, you're in the forever box. Flow is a technical term. And as I mentioned earlier, it is technically defined as an optimal state of consciousness, one where we feel our best and we perform our best. More specifically, it refers to those moments of rapt attention and total absorption. We get so focused on the task at hand, everything else just disappears. And this is Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. He is often called the godfather of flow psychology. The first thing he discovered is that flow is definable. It has seven core characteristics. Action and awareness will start to merge. Your sense of self will vanish. Time will dilate, which is a fancy way of saying it passes strangely. So sometimes, occasionally, it'll slow down and you get that freeze frame effect from anybody who's been in a car crash. And more frequently, it speeds up and five hours go by in like five minutes. And throughout, all aspects of performance, both mental and physical, go through the roof. Csikszentmihalyi also discovered that flow is universal. It shows up in everyone, everywhere, provided certain initial conditions are met. Final thing that Csikszentmihalyi discovered is that flow is fundamental. Flow is fundamental to well-being and overall life satisfaction. In fact, in his study, he found that the people who score off the charts, highest in the world for overall life satisfaction and well-being, are the people with the most flow in their lives. The next question researchers turned their attention to was, all right, so this is optimal performance. Great, how optimal? What are we talking about? Turns out, pretty optimal. What we now know in athletics, for example, is pretty much every gold medal or world championship that's ever been won, there's a flow state at its heart. In business, we have some of the most compelling data. So McKinsey, the global consultancy, did a 10-year study, and they found that top executives in flow are five times more productive than out of flow. Five times more productive is 500% more productive. It means you could go to work on Monday, take Tuesday through Friday off, and get as much done as your steady state peers. Interestingly, two days a week in flow, you are 1,000% more productive than the competition. And in flow, we get five of the most potent neurochemicals that the brain can produce. And if you really want to understand why flow allows us to do the impossible, understanding these neurochemicals is key. Now, all five of them amplify performance. They boost physical performance. They will do everything from increased strength to deaden pain to amplifying muscle reaction time. More importantly, they impact cognitive function. And if you really want to understand how flow can help us do the impossible, you need to understand how the state impacts the three sides of the high performance triangle. And more specifically, how these five neurochemicals impact the three sides of the high performance triangle. And that's motivation, creativity, and learning. And I'll start with motivation. So besides being performance enhancing chemicals, the five chemicals that show up in flow are pleasure drugs. In fact, they're the five most potent pleasure drugs the brain can produce. Flow is the only time it appears that we get all five at once, which is why flow is the most addictive state on earth. But when you look at that McKinsey study and you people find people 500% more productive in flow, this massive boost in motivation is one of the main reasons why. Something similar happens to creativity. So creativity is really critical, right? It's been called the most important 21st century skill, right? The number one thing we need to thrive in this current century. And it's also a massively misunderstood concept. The final piece in the puzzle is learning, right? We live in a very fast paced world. If you want to succeed, you're going to have to speed up your rate of learning. Flow does this for you. So quick shorthand for how learning works in the brain more neurochemicals that show up during an experience, better chance it's gonna move from short-term holding into long-term storage. Flow is this giant neurochemical dump. 
Now the really good news is that what we now know is that flow states are hackable. What we have discovered is that flow states have triggers. These are preconditions that lead to more flow. There are 20 of them in total, but the first thing you need to know is the most obvious. Flow follows focus. It can only show up when all of our attention is focused in the right here, the right now. So that's what most of these triggers do. They drive attention into the now. It turns out flow is eminently trainable. So I want to tell you why I think all this information matters so much. And to do that, I have to explain this number, three minutes, 59.4 seconds. So that is the amount of time it took Roger Bannister to run the world's first four minute mile, all right? And when he did this, it was an absolute impossible. So people thought it was going to kill him. It also took forever to run this first four minute mile. If you look at mile times, they dropped about a quarter second, a, a quarter second a decade for 60, 70 years leading up to it. But Roger Bannister runs the first four minute mile. And then a month later, somebody breaks his record. A couple months later, somebody else breaks his record. In fact, within 10 years, teenagers had broken that record. So you got to ask yourself, how is that possible? All that changed is the frame the mental frame we built around the task. What used to be impossible was suddenly viewed as possible and that somehow made it a whole lot more possible. This is known to researchers as the Bannister effect. And what it really is, is an extremely tight coupling between the mind and the body, right? You have to believe you are capable of achieving the impossible before you can actually achieve the impossible. There's just no other way around it. And I think this knowledge puts a wonderful and yet kind of terrible burden on each and every one of us, right? Ask yourself, what kinds of impossible grand challenges would you guys go after? Would you solve in your own life? Would you try to solve in the world? If you could be 500% more productive, if you could be 600% more creative, if you could cut learning times in half, this is exactly what is available to each and every one of you today. But what you choose to do this, this information is entirely up to you.